Welcome to lecture 30. This lecture is on sources of errors when we are doing GPS surveying. So, it will cover what are the different sources of error and how we can minimize the error which is present in our observation. So, we start the lecture. Uh, when we take the observations using the methods which I have explained you in my previous lecture, those observations have some kind of inherent errors present in the data. So, there could be mistake, there could be error which are present in my observations. So, we have to understand what are those errors, what are the sources and how we can minimize those errors. So, mainly uh, you know the uh, signals are traveling through the atmosphere. So, atmosphere will intervene and give some kind of error in my observations. So, when we are talking of the errors, we have uh, basically three types mistakes or gross error, systematic error and random error. So, uh, we have the selective availability available the department of defense earlier actually put the restrictions not to use this particular uh, signal, but selective availability was lifted and then we, we are from May 2000, we were able to use uh, the signals without this feature which was restricted and we uh, our accuracy improved in that case. So, here you can see that uh, when the signals which are traveling from the satellite to the uh, unit GPS unit to the receiver unit. Now, uh, this they will intervene with several things. So, one thing which will intervene is the earth atmosphere. So, we have the different layers of the atmosphere, the signals will be refracted from its uh, original path and then when it strikes uh, with uh, ground objects like there is a building here. So, it would strike with the solid structure. And when it strikes the solid structure, it will be refracted to the some other directions. Similarly, we have electromagnetic fields. So, electromagnetic fields are also affecting the radio waves and then uh, some metallic object like car. So, when it strikes to the metallic object, again there will be change in the characteristics of the signal. So, you can see that these signals interference is there uh, with the uh, presence of the different types of objects which are present on the ground as well as the atmosphere. So, when these uh, uh, signals are traveling uh, because of the interaction with these, it will give me some error. So, what are those different kind of error could be present? Uh, one could be the orbit error in which this uh, GPS satellite is moving, uh, the another could be the clock error because these satellites have four clocks. Then we have uh, ionospheric refraction, tropospheric refraction in the atmosphere, then it is a multipath. Uh, when it strikes with the object, it is going to follow a different path to reach to the receiver. And then th there will be uh, receiver noise present, error present in the receiver. So, all these together. Uh, will give me error in my observations. So, if we categorize them into different sources, we can see here atmospheric effect is one, measurement of the noise could be another, ephemeris error, ephemeris of the satellites, satellite clock drift, multipath effects, a geometry of the satellite we will discuss little later in our presentation and due to selective ability, but that selective availability has been turned off. Then gross error is there, systematic error is there and random error is there. So, we have error due to various sources, but there are three categories of the error. One is the gross which is caused due to the undesirable field condition. When we are working, if we are careless, undesirable field conditions are there then these gross errors might occur when we are taking the observations. <coughs> so, these gross error could be blunders also. Then we have second category the systematic error and the name itself is suggesting that 
these errors are following certain laws, physical laws and they are systematic in nature. So, if we know the nature of the error, we can model them mathematically and we can find out the magnitude also and these systematic error are either positive or negative. So, we know that whether the error is to be subtracted or either has to be added. Then next category the random error. Now, random error which occurs in our observations, uh, we do not have any control, we do not know its behavior, we do not know its magnitude. So, very very difficult actually to control the random error, but we can definitely do the control on a systematic error. But to a larger extent, if we are careful in our observation part, then probably uh, some of the error we can minimize by using our approach. So, we know that there are uh, gross error could be there are several sources due to this gross error is taking place. So, there could be uh, for example, when we are working in the area, there could be permanent obstructions uh, to the satellite receivers which leads to the poor quality of the observations or loss of the lock of the satellites. So, uh, Sometimes we have the zamming of the signals by the electromagnetic fields are there in the area in which we are working. So, it will interference with those signals or jamming the signals. So, if we have incorrect or faulty level of the receiver antenna, it has to be leveled on the, to the uh, tripod on which we are keeping. Then it could be the error in the orientation and measurement of the antenna height. So, these are some of the points due to which we will find that some error is taking place in our observations. We can minimize them and these are the steps. Our cutoff angle more than the obstruction present around the station should be free from interferences as far as possible. We should do the proper centering and leveling of the GPS receiver and manufacturer parameters including the antenna height are to be taken. and uh, mission parameters also to be properly set. So, initial setting of the instrument has to be done properly. We if we talk about the random error whose nature is not known to us, okay, we cannot model them, but we can definitely reduce the magnitude of the random error from our observation by having proper planning by executing the GPS surveying method. So, we can uh, what we can do is use the statistical method and through that statistical method we can distribute the error amongst all our observations. So, that it is not present in one particular location. So, systematic error now there are various systematic error which we would like to model which we like to find out determine and take up the steps to minimize them. Number one could be ephemeral or the orbital error, clock error. Then the second could be the multipath error, system noise, antenna phase. Third could be atmospheric, ionospheric delay and tropospheric delay because the uh, once the signal is traveling from the source to the receiver, there is some delay. Then geometry of the satellites. So, these satellites uh, are making certain geometry uh, a group of satellite networking of the satellites which we will discuss. So, these are systematic sources of errors and if we look at the uh, civil users in a standard positioning mode SPS mode, uh, these sources which I have just now explained you, they are giving us some magnitude of error like satellite clock satellite clock can give me error up to 1.5 to 3.6 meter of error. Due to the orbital characteristics I can get less than a meter error due to ionosphere, due to the troposphere my error may be uh, ionosphere will give me higher error 5 to 7 when troposphere will give me 0 0.5 to 0 0.7 meter error. Then I have the error in the receiver, receiver noise because it is made up of a lot of electronic components. So, I can get 0 0.3 to 1.5 meter about error. Multipath when it is striking with the different objects 
concrete or metal or a tree um, I can get the error from 0 0.6 to 1.2 meter error and user error could be a very large kilometer or more. So, in cumulative effect we have to so we in my observation the cumulative effect is present I do not know exactly the distribution according to the source. In now there is one more thing the error will be increased by the pedo precision. So, we will explain that pedo dilution of precision. Now, this systematic uh, space segment error it arises number one is the satellite system and its motion then clock error then the satellite ephemeris error. So, uh, we have to actually uh, satellite antenna offset error we have to calculate and then some corrections can be applied. We can get some of the values which are available at the uh, IGS site which is given over here if you want to apply that correction. Ephemeris error are there the uh, satellites when the, uh, the predicted and the computed positions of those satellite differ from its actual position which leads to the error. So, uh, this from usual uh, survey work which we are doing the broadcast ephemeris uh, can generally be considered uh, over a small baseline distance up to 20 kilometer. But for long if we are working longer than that 20 kilometer then we have to consider the ephemeris error we have to apply the corrections to the data. Then we have the atmospheric errors in present in my data sets. So, as we know that the signals are propagating from the satellite to the receiver through the atmosphere and atmosphere will annotate the velocity and the signals and it will cause delay in the arrival of the GPS signal and thus uh, there will be error in the range measurements. And this atmospheric error um, could be due to the ionosphere error and due to the troposphere error two types of error we can reduce it we can minimize directly through the measurements and making use of the mathematical models they are available and we can make use of them and minimize these errors which are present in the data. Then we have another systematic error could be due to the antenna offset error or due to the hardware error or receiver clock error. So, antenna offset error will affect in the elevation data. And uh, observations uh, uh, involving similar type of antennas are taken in order to understand how much is the antenna offset error. If we maintain a proper orientation of the antenna while we are taking the observations so that we can catch the signal from the maximum number of satellites we can minimize this antenna error. Then we have the receiver hardware error. So, this will um, also due to the cable due to the receiver electronics that might cause error in my observation part. Under the systematic error we have a receiver clock error. So, there is a large uh, deviation of the receiver time from the GPS time to the receiver clock error and it also contributes as I explained in my previous lecture also very high error. So, if there is a millisecond of error in the time it can give me error in several kilometers. So, due to that uh, receiver clock gets computed independent way of the GPS surveying we can get the error in our data. This is also uh, a, a, a big source of error in our GPS observations multi path error and this is happening because of the different objects which are present on the ground they will behave with the radio wave they will behave in a differently and the rays will be refracted from the reflected and refracted from its position. So, as you can see in the diagram there is a high rise building there is a tree and the rays which were striking to these objects will get reflected and then reflected will be received by the receiver on the ground. So, in a way what you are getting is the distorted kind of a signals. So, we can reduce this uh, multi path we can basically uh, take very long hours of observations that is one. 
the first thing is that we avoid such kind of situation. If we cannot avoid, then we have to take long hours of observation and uh, we can actually uh, use a different kind of a antenna systems also in that case. So, uh, the multipath between the satellite and the receiver basically is caused due to the vehicles which are moving on the ground. Uh, it could be the wet ground, it could be a reflecting surface or a sea surface. So, what we are doing is that uh, in order to do that, uh, in order to compensate to that, so that we have less multipath path error, we are selecting the right kind of antenna. So, these this diagram shows that we are using either the chalk ring antenna or path antenna with the ground plane. So, if we select a proper kind of a antenna in our system that can minimize the effect of multipath error uh, from our observations. Uh, then geometry of the satellite is also causing the error. This is also one of the prime factor which is causing the error in my observation. Geometry means that how the satellite is configured when the observations are being taken. So, the relative positions of those satellites and the figure or the angle which is made at the receiver point. So, we are using here a term called dilution of precision DOP. It reflects the satellite position relative to the other satellites at the receiver location. So, there are actually 5 distinct kinds of DOPs as you can see now here uh, that here we have the good satellite geometry. Suppose we are standing at a point and then we are getting the signals from the two satellites which are quite far apart and we are getting a good intersection of these two rays at sharp intersection of the good rays. We call that this is a good satellite geometry. We prefer this kind of a satellite geometry while taking the observation and you can observe, you can see on the display screen of the receiver the geometry of the satellite while taking the observations. So, this is a, a, a good satellite geometry. We have uh, 4 as I told you earlier also that more than 4 are required, but minimum 4 are required. So, this is a good satellite geometry that these 4 are making a good angle with each other and they are well distributed and uh, the signals are received and then intersection of these will give me the locations of the point, the coordinates of the point, the accurate value of the point. Now, this is called poor <coughs> geometry. Why poor geometry? Because the angle is acute, these two satellites are very close to each other and they are making very acute angle and then you can see um, this is the region where the error could be present while the geometry is poor. So, we have a large intersection region when the geometry is poor, the intersection may not be sharp, but in the at the intersection there is an overlap and that overlap is basically giving me the error. Then the next one is this uh, kind of a position where uh, we can see that this is a called poor satellite geometry. So, this poor satellite geometry is that all the satellites they are not well distributed, they are towards my left side of the observer of the device and also they are making a very very small angle with each other. So, they are making very very small angle with each other. So, all the rays are now and when they are intersecting with each other again the intersected area will be much much larger, it will not be a sharp point feature as compared to the good geometry. So, this if we are getting this kind of a configuration while taking the observation, we should avoid that situation. So, that there is uh, chances of error are less in our. So, whenever I am talking of the DOP dilution of precision, we have uh, 5 types of uh, categories. One is the position dilution of precision, which is commonly used and this is called PDOP. So, we are commonly using the PDOP position dilution of precision. Then the second term is the geometric dilution of precision GDOP. 
The third one is the vertical dilution of the precision which is called V dop. Fourth one is called the horizontal dilution of precision which is the H dop and next one is called the T dop which is the time dilution of the precision. So, let us see this uh, uh, dop position. So, this is a poor G dop. Okay. Now, G dop is here is the geometric dilution of it. We are talking of the geometry of the satellites here. So, these satellites are overhead very close to each other. They are not uh, making good angle with each other. So, this is a poor geometric dilution of precision and I am bound to get some error in my observations if the geometry is something like this. So, we have to avoid, we have to wait some time as I told you earlier uh, also that the satellites are continuously moving. So, this is not the static position of the satellite, they are continuously moving. If you wait for a while, you will find that the new satellites have uh, been received by the receiver. Uh, you have uh, are able to see now good geometry of the satellite. So, when they, whenever the new satellites are coming uh, into the view, you can estimate the geometry, you can see whether it is a good geometry or not and then you can proceed. So, it is simply waiting for some time in order to arrive at a good G dot. So, if you wait for some time, you will find that this is a good job. Now, you have the uh, minimum those 4 satellites captured and uh, the uh, geometry is also very, very good. They are making very good angle with each other and these uh, signals are also intersecting at very sharp point. So, only uh, waiting for some time and uh, we are we will get this kind of. Then this is a good G dop but it is a bad visibility. Suppose, we are working in a, a in an area which is a mountainous area or where there are uh, high, high rise buildings are there or forested area there, then we have a satellite uh, signals obstructed by the different features. So, those high rise features uh, will obstruct the signal. So, although we uh, have 4 satellites up in the sky, they are making very good geometry, very good angle with each other, but the uh, as you can see on the left side, the uh, signals are obstructed by building and the right side the signals are obstructed by the higher ground. So, we are getting um, signals from the 2 satellites only and uh, signals from the 2 satellites are actually not enough to get a good intersection point for our observation. So, this kind of a situation is also not preferred and we have to wait for some time. Now, you see that uh, whenever we are talking of uh, these kind of a error, if we uh, just plot these error, you know we have the timing on the x axis and the error magnitude on the y axis. So, you can see the different colors are indicating colors for g dop, p dop, v dop, h dop and t dop. So, maximum is uh, effect is due to the geometry of the satellite and it can go as high as 3.5 meter actually. So, the curves are more or less uh, kind of a parallel in nature with each other, but this is indicating here that the number of satellites which are visible, the lower, lower uh, graph shows the number of satellites which are visible at that particular time and uh, uh, the kind of a G dop we are getting. So, we are getting actually very high value of G dop because the number of satellites which were visible were less. So, here you are getting about 3 or 4 satellites visible as, but as the number of satellites uh, uh, would increase uh, become higher and higher then you will find that the G dop becomes lower and other error becomes lower and lower. So, one of the ways is that uh, large number of satellite with a good geometry if we uh, like to have, we can minimize the error. Another error which could be present in our data set which is called cycle slip error. So, cycle slip error basically um, it is uh, uh, because of the two reasons. One could be that obstructions are there from trees, from the building or from the infrastructure or we have low signal to noise ratio present. 
so radio interference is there. So, it is because of that it is observational dependent. This second could be cycle slip could be the receiver dependent, the instrument which we are using either about the quality of the receiver, about the antenna inclination and the signal processing which we are doing. So, this can be removed uh, during pre-processing operations, cycle slip can be removed by taking the GPS phase observable. In order to remove uh, the cycle slip is required to be detected and then it can be removed. So, commercial uh, software which are available to us, uh, they usually have inbuilt capabilities to do that kind of a thing. So, how to check now my observations? When I am taking my observations, uh, P dope should be uh, very good if it is 1 to 3, good will be 4 to 5, and fair will be 6, and suspect will be greater than 6. So, P dope should be uh, between 1 to 3 for a better quality of the data. So, let us summarize those various types of error and what is the impact on our observations. Uh, there are three broad categories of error, gross error, systematic error and random errors. Now, the gross error we can avoid through proper planning and execution of our survey work which we are performing on the ground. Systematic error, because we know the nature of those errors, we can uh, model these errors we can actually apply these corrections very easily from the our data sets. And there are several kind of uh, systematic errors which are present in our data set may be the, the space segment error, atmospheric error, receiver error and the other type of error which I have explained you. Now, among all the errors which I have explained in this lecture, receiver clock error is the most critical. That small fraction of the second error can give you a very large error in the distance measurement. So, this is a very critical issue. Then error which is caused by the ionosphere is worst. So, normally we try to take our observations when the atmosphere is less polluted, we have the good uh, visibility in the atmosphere, we like to take the observations. Uh, during that time, but also we can apply the corrections to the data. Then multipath error is another, second most critical error is the multipath error. We cannot avoid those objects which are present on the ground. We have to take the observations, um, sometimes we cannot avoid them, we have to take the observation and then, learn, then later on we can apply the corrections to our observation, but those objects uh, definitely will deviate the signals from its. Uh, direct um, reaching to the receiver part. Then among the space segment error, ephemeris, ephemeris of the satellite, the ephemeris error is also most significant under the space segment. Uh, cycle slip error, it is get detected and uh, repaired during the pre-processing. Now, errors which are random in nature uh, can get reduced through processing them and distributing through the adjustment procedure, because we do not know their behavior. So, we have to um, use the software in order to process the data and adjust this kind of a error in our data set. So, uh, we have to take care, proper care should be taken while we are taking the um, observations from the GPS and when we are selecting a right method. Uh, what error could be present and straight away we should not use our observations. Our raw data has the error, we have to process this raw data through the software. There are various commercial available software uh, through which we can uh, post process the data, we can apply these uh, different corrections and uh, get the corrected value of the three dimensional coordinate x, y and z and then later on we can use these coordinate system uh, for our mapping purpose, for measurement purpose or for our GIS related activity. So, this is all about the error we want to explain you. Thank you.